What really happened to Tina Turner The Untold Truth One of the most dynamic soul singers in American music history Tina Turner was a vibrant forest from the moment she stepped on stage as lead singer of the I and Tina Turner revealed in the late 50s. Her greedy and growling performances beat down doors everywhere looking back to the double-barreled attack of gospel fervor and free-spirited abandon that had originally formed a soul in the early 50s. Her life with Ike Turner was the subject of the biographical film What's Love Got to Do with It in 1993. Turner was born Anna Mae Bullock on the 26th of November 1939 in Brownsville, Tennessee. She grew up in Northfish, Tennessee not far from Brownsville where she lived with her sharecropping family in a two-room house. Young Anna spent much of her childhood with various relatives starting with her paternal grandparents. She moved in with the farm overseer's family when her parents moved to Oak Ridge, Tennessee in search of government jobs promised by the United States during World War II. When her sister Eileen graduated from high school and moved anew to Detroit an inmate moved in with her maternal grandmother when her grandmother died in 1956 she went to live with her mother and Eileen in St. Louis, Missouri. Her musical talent emerged when she was still a youngster but it was during her teen years in St. Louis in the mid-1950s that she made her historic liaison with bandley the Mike Turner whom she married in 1960. The collaboration began at the Club Manhattan in East St. Louis, Kansas. Initially Tina Turner performs under the stage name of Little and That until the band's first hit single A Fool in Love scurried up the rhythm and blues charts in 1960 with Tina Turner as lead singer. During the 1960s the Turners worked as an opening act for the Rolling Stones and Tina released a crossover hit called River Deep Mountain High recorded by the legendary Phil Spector that moved her into the forefront of popular music. The Turner's performances enhanced with high-energy backup singers called the I. Cats brought them to the forefront of rock and roll between 1958 and 1978. One fact that had remained hidden to the public during the Turner's years of stardom was the presence of semi-severe domestic violence that plagued their marriage. Tina Turner who suffered intense physical and emotional abuse at the hands of her husband reached her limit in June of 1976. She endured a severe beating shortly after the couple arrived in Dallas for their first stop on a national tour. In desperation she abandoned Ike Turner although the tour was a major one for their careers. She left with less than 50 cents in her pocket and spared no time to collect her baggage. One month later on the 27th of July 1976 Tina Turner filed for divorce and emerged with a small fortune from the settlement once the divorce was finalized in March of 1978. The money paid off lawsuits from Cancel Dyke and Tina Turner review engagements Turner gave the rest away leaving her virtually penniless but she forged ahead intent on creating a solo career of her own. In 1977 Turner moved to London England and spent the remainder of that decade living and working in Europe. Undeterred by the poor showing of her 1978 solo album Russ Turner hired manager Roger Davis in 1979. She returned to the United States in 1981 toured with the Rolling Stones and renewed her efforts to revitalize her career. She met with success in 1984 when her album Private Dancers spun off three top ten singles including What's Love Got To Do With It. The Sun became her first number one hit record and she won three Grammys that year including Best Female Pop Vocalist, Best Female Rock Vocalist and Record of the Year. Yes, as she conquered the issues of her tempestuous marriage to Ike Turner she quickly tired of explaining to the press and public about the years she had spent under his fin godly spell. In an attempt to bring closure to the affair she immersed herself in documenting the painful details of her former marriage in an autobiography I Tina. That same year her Break Every Rule album went multi-platinum and she added another Grammy to her collection for Back Where You Started. In 1987 Turner took to the road for 18 months for a world tour of 25 countries that lasted until 1988. Turner's concert tour is sold out repeatedly her recording her recordings registered brisk sales and her Capitol Records release Tina Live in Europe won a Grammy for Best Rock Vocal Performance by a Female. By this time Turner's image had grown to legendary proportions she took some time to rest after the well-received tour and in 1989 returned to Europe where she bought a home in London in Notting Hill Gate and settled there. At the movies Turner performed in select motion pictures although acting was never the focus of her career. 
In 1975 she appeared as the Acid Queen in the film version of the Who's Rock Opera Tommy and in 1985 she portrayed the character of anti-entity in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Her preference was to appear in roles of women who emote strength. In 1993 a British video appeared called Tina Turner The Girl from That Pusher documentary including rare footage from the early years of the Ike and Tina Turner review. The Low Visibility Project was upstaged however when film director Brian Gibson transformed to Turner's 1986 biography into a feature film. Kate Lanier wrote the screenplay for the movie which starred Angela Bassett and Lawrence Fishburne and Turner generously provided creative consultation for the project. In 1996 the indefatigable Turner released Wildest Dreams.